Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to Project Irrationality. Unfortunately, as you've seen in the previous video, the distro plate was leaking and I took a break of two days or one day. Can't really remember, but anyway, we're going to fix the distro plate today, which means we have to open it. If everything works out, if there will be enough material left on those O-rings, we can just cut out the part where they're glued together, re-glue them and make sure that this time everything is sealed off and is not leaking. It could be that there is not enough material left for the O-rings and that they will be too short, that we will have to get new ones. In that case, it will delay by two days for you. It will just be a cut in the video. But first of all, let's just open it, see if we can just shorten the O-rings, cut out the position where it's glued together and just re-glue them, make sure that everything is leak-proof. Remove the thousand screws, the distro plate is open. It's time to investigate the joints of the O-rings. I think that's where we'll find the root of evil. If we just check the connection right here, it looks like it's not 100% perfect. Same goes for this one. I think I just have to cut them, remove maybe one millimeter, as little as possible, because if I remove too much, I cannot connect them anymore. It's already pretty much on the edge, I think. And then hopefully it will be fine. For this type of work I can really recommend the Loctite 406 instant adhesive or super glue. That's the stuff I also always use for all my 3M submersion builds. Really really strong glue. It's also very expensive but works really really nicely for those kind of o-rings. Obviously I'm not going to repeat the same mistake twice, that's why we will just test all of the three chambers individually. I attached one fitting with glass tube on one side, sealed off the other side, now inserting a little bit of fluid. Then we'll just use a little bit of pressure and see if those chambers will be leak proof. Yeah, again, unfortunately, this area is leaking again. Really, really annoying. I will still test the other two individually and see if they're fine now, but we will still have to open this once again. Since everything is disassembled anyway, I decided to quickly also test the riser cable because I was really concerned after bending it so many times and mounting and unmounting the GPU that the riser cable might fail in the end. But as you can see, the system is up and running. I decided to also mount a 2080 Ti quickly. I know it really looks completely messy. It is also messy, but it works fine to test. You can see a display signal I'm in Windows. I also have to point out that it's really necessary to use a GPU with the dedicated bandwidth. Otherwise, I was testing this previously like on a 1050, I think. And with 1050, it was working fine, but with a Titan RTX, it was failing. But as you can see with 2080 Ti, everything is fine. So we can proceed and mount the riser cable back into the system.
time to try it again. Everything is assembled again. It took me about three hours to get everything back into the system. Time to try again. Yeah, don't really know what to say. I'm just absolutely happy with this build. It's by far the most beautiful build I've ever made. Absolutely amazing. Finally, everything works. No leakages so far. Still have to wait for the fluid to settle down a little bit. Still some air in there. Obviously, I also still have to fix all the RGB lighting, but for the moment, I think it's just time to enjoy some beauty shots. I just performed the first real boot. CPU is detected correctly, W3175X, 98,000 megabyte of DDR4, currently still running at 2133 megahertz, uh, which is obviously not configured correctly yet, so no XMP profile. And we can see both U.2 devices and the Corsair Force MP510 are detected correctly, so that's a very good start. A quick check in the mainboard BIOS monitor, we see CPU temperature 39 degrees Celsius, which is fine because there's a certain load always in the BIOS. VRM temperature 37, that's also totally fine. PCH temperature, which is the chipset 34, looks also good. Water temperature currently 27 degrees Celsius, that's also cool. We also have the pump speed of the D5, which is almost 5000 RPM at the moment. We have water pump plus two speed here, which is actually one of the Corsair fans because it was easier to reach this location. That's why I had to attach it here, but it doesn't really matter. It's still just a normal fan control. And here we see PCH fan speed is currently running at 2000 RPM. I'm not sure if this small fan will get annoying later, but we will check once everything is set up and the fans are adjusted to the correct speed. If we go to tool, there's graphics card information. We can go to GPU post. That's actually a very, very useful feature because now we can detect if the GPU is running at the full lane speed. And we can see it's detected at X16, which means that all PCI Express lanes are there. Riser cable is working perfectly fine. The system is finally ready. Everything is up and running. You can hear or you cannot hear that the fans are now finally somehow configured at least. Same goes for the pump. So we have some kind of base configuration. Everything is still running totally stock. So memory is still running 2133 megahertz. CPU is running stock. Also, if you take a look to your right, you can see that only eight of the 12 dims are currently illuminated. And the reason for that is because Corsair IQ currently only supports eight memory dims. And I hope that Corsair will take my feedback because I'm getting in touch with them um, so they can fix this because I know other people are also using this board and this type of memory configuration and they have the same issue. I saw, I think, two or three comments over the previous videos where I got the feedback that they can only use eight out of 12 dims, which is kind of annoying. And I hope that Corsair will give us an update to this because currently you can only select between two times four or just one times four, for example, if you have AM4, then you just have the four dims, or if you go for two times four, um, that's what you would have, for example, on socket um, 2066 on X299. But for this very special platform, it seems not to be supported so far because we're using 12 dims in total. Also, currently, everything is set to white, which is something I really like. I think it just gives the system a very elegant look. For the next video, we will do all the configuration we can do with the system, starting from fan setup. We will adjust the memory speed to make sure that we have the memory modules running at the correct speed. Maybe also do some memory overclocking if there's headroom. Obviously, CPU overclocking. We will check GPU status temperature, maybe do some overclocking with a Titan. SSD performance, check what the cooling impact is of our cooler that's sitting on the back for the PCI Express SSDs, uh, SSD performance in general. All this type of stuff we will cover in the next video. I will be on vacation for about two weeks, but I think I will have videos coming on anyway because I will just spend this week producing a lot of stuff so I can enjoy my holidays. But I think it will take at least uh, two weeks until we get more coverage and more videos 
from this project. At this point, I also really want to thank you for all the comments you left over the previous 10 episodes we did for Project Irrationality, especially all the feedback when it comes to glass tubing and all this kind of stuff. I also want to tell you that I'm really reading every single comment that exists on my YouTube channel. I'm spending typically like 30 to 60 minutes a day just reading through all the comments because personally I feel if you spend the time investing like typing something onto my channel, leaving me feedback, then you also deserve my time that I'm just reading your comments and obviously I cannot reply to every single one because that would be too much, that would take probably an entire day just to cover all the comments from one single video. But you can be sure that I'm reading everything, so thank you very much for all the feedback over the previous 10 videos. I mean in general on my channel obviously, thanks for all the feedback, but especially considering the glass tubes and all the kind of issues we had. It was really, really helpful to get in touch with the community, to get all kind of um, experiences and recommendations from you guys that really helped me over the previous videos to finish this build. So thanks for joining in into this episode and see you next time. Bye.